Welcome back to the Crochet Karate as well as my friends over at Joanne.com. This is the Bernat Velvet Stitch Along and another Stitch Along with our friends over at Joanne. So what we have today is that we're going to be making a pillow and in week number one we're going to create the diagonal popcorn stitch just like you see. I know it's hard to see in this photograph but I have a sample done and you can uh, do that as well. So what we're going to do in order to play is that you'll need a size J, six millimeter crochet hook and an 18 inch pillow form so you can gather your materials and you have time to do so. We're going to be using Bernat Velvet Yarn. It's a new yarn. Let me show you that now. So we're introducing Yarnspiration's Bernat Velvet Yarn and this is a brand new yarn. I really think this is gonna go big time. This yarn feels so amazing. It feels great through the fingers. It slides on and off the hook. It, it's amazing. The color lines are in the jewel tone family so it's really quite vibrant, very rich oriented, almost like royalty and I think that when you make anything with this you're going to love it. So with this particular project you need two balls. So you're gonna use one complete ball and a quarter of another. So if you wanna do a matching set uh, pillow set for yourself just get three balls that's all you're gonna need and then you can have yourself two pillows just like you see. So you're gonna need a six millimeter size J crochet hook and let's go to the diagram next and let's see what we're gonna get ourselves into. So for those that are familiar with corner to corner this is known as C to C. This is a regular corner to corner but every four rows is a popcorn stitch. So you're gonna start off with two rows just being regular corner to corner and I'll be demonstrating this and then the third row is popcorn. Then you do three more rows of regular corner to corner and then the fourth row is popcorn once again. So the secret is is that you have to get so many in, uh, inches wide in order to match your 18 pillow, uh, 18 inch pillow frame. The secret number is 19 boxes. So this is considered one box, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And so you're gonna go all the way to, so that you get 19. Now because you're growing them out evenly there will be 19 boxes going out this way and 19 boxes going out that way. Once we get to our 19 then we start decreasing to come back in. So this is showing you how it's going to decrease. So it's really not a hard pattern in order to be able to follow and the popcorns are not actually very hard or difficult to do and because they're every uh, fourth row that really is not a lot of work involved either. So, so here's our completed piece just like you see here and this is 19 boxes wide by 19 high. So what we have is that I know you can't see it really from this angle but what you have is you have these popcorn stitches that are jumping out. So you're gonna get two rows done and then you got the popcorns that you see and it really is amazing. These are one of those ones where the photography really doesn't pick it up that well but when you're in person and see this and you can feel it going through your fingers it's really quite amazing. So let's grab our crochet hook and let's go. So let's begin and we're going to create a slip knot and we need to do a chain of six. If you've done corner to corner to before you already know how to get started but let's just get those new people involved with corner to corner. So remember the one on the hook never counts as one and I'm gonna show you a little bit of a secret to keep yourself organized. So go one, two, three, pinch the third one and go four, five, six. Where I'm pinching is the very first stitch that you want to do and I want you to double crochet and just slide your thumb out of the way so that you can access that stitch and double crochet into that stitch. Now you're going to double crochet in the remaining two that are here. So each one of these boxes consists of four stitches when you really look at it. You've got your uh, chaining that you skipped over. Okay so you got your chaining and then you got three double crochets just like you see. So once you've got that done you're going to turn your work and go for row number two. So turn your work like that. So you're looking at it like this, turn like this and kind of turn it up on a side like this like it's gonna be like a V shape. So coming down and then going back up. And I want you to do that same secret again. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. And right where I'm pinching is going to be the first stitch so just move your thumb out of the way and double crochet into that one. And you only have two stitches left on that same chain and you're going to double crochet into each. Now you may have this switching around and chain and, and turning around. So let me just do the next one which is the last one of that chain. So there should be a total of three double crochets in a row. And, that and then we have that chain that you have here. So this thing should be facing straight down, this yarn strand should be facing straight down and you are going to slip stitch to the gapping space of the final chain area and the first double crochet. So just going in and pull through and through and we're going to do another box. 
So we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. And in that same space, I want you to place in three more double crochets. So one, two, and three. So technically you're kind of crocheting like you're walking upstairs or going downstairs however, however you wanna look at it but that's exactly how we're doing. So now so let's turn our work and do a popcorn row. So this is the third one in. So let's do our secret. So we're gonna one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. Now the first one where I'm pinching is going to be the first double crochet. So just slide your thumb out of the way and do a double crochet into that one. Now the next one is going to be a popcorn. To do that you're going to crochet five times into that same chain. So one, two, let's try two again, two, and we have three, four, and five. So there's a total of five stitches all within the one. Once you have your five in there, whatever. so what you're going to do is just slide this off the hook and I want you to count this back. So the first one was the chain area, the next one was the double crochet and then the next one, the third one over is the, the first of the, the five double crochets. So insert your hook going towards the back, grab the loop and pull it forward and I want you in the next chain to double crochet. So you just double crochet into that final chain and you're good to go. Now flip it up and join it with the slip stitch to the spacing that is in the next one here. And so we're going to popcorn again. So we're gonna chain up three counts as your double crochet and now the next one is just a popcorn. So we, we count five times. So one double crochet, two, three, four, and five. And go, okay so this time because it's not an edge, the first one is the chaining up the space which counts as a double crochet and then the next one is the first of the grouping of five. And you're just gonna go towards the back, grab the loop, pull through and in the same space where you just put those uh, five in there, put the last double crochet in there and then proceed again to the next one. So just attach it with a slip stitch and then this is your last popcorn of the row. So chain up three and put five double crochets to make your popcorn. So one, two, three, four and five. Okay, and go to the second one over, grab it and then just double crochet one final time into that same chain space. And that's it, that's all you have to do. So turn your work and now the next three rows are gonna be regular corner to corner. So do the secret, so one, two, three, and then one, or four, five, six, and right where I pinched is the first one when I first started got corner to corner I always never did that and I was always having to count and it was really slowing me down. So if you can pinch and uh, you know hold it, it you, you just save yourself a ton of time. Okay, so we're just working our way back through the chain. And then flip it up. And because there's a bobble here, it's a little bit tighter than normal which is what you want but you're still gonna go into the gapping space to work your way up. So one, two, three and then chain space, three more double crochets and you're gonna continue to do that all the way across. Okay, flip up, get it.
this is your final box. So you're still growing out. So you can tell that when you're growing out in an equal square like this that each side then is the same. So let's count our boxes. So let's turn it to the good side. Let's count our boxes across as if um, so let's just turn it like this because that's the way it would look in the diagram. So you have one box, two, three, and four. And so if because it's a square there should be four boxes high. So one, two, three, and four. So once you get your decreasing going on you're just gonna continue to follow the pattern. So there will be three corner to corners regular in a row and then a uh, popcorn going in. So you're just gonna continue to maintain the pattern. So if I wanted to decrease now what I have to do is that I have to where I've stopped is the last time it's gonna grow. So in your case it will be 19. So in my case it's only four. So here what we're going to do to start decreasing is that right where we finished we're in the wrong spot. So we have to slip stitch ourselves carefully back to this chain uh, space right here. To do that you're just going to go into the next stitch yarning over pulling it through and you're going to slip stitch in each one going back towards that chain space and then that's where you're going to begin. So if this was the bobble, so let's just say we're going to do a bobble. So you just chain up your three as regular and then you do your popcorn, your five double crochets, you popcorn it and then you put in um, a double crochet and continue along. It was only in the, the increase that you, you did your chaining of six, you double crocheted in, then a bobble and then a double crochet. But when you're in the decrease mode you immediately just chain three and start your popcorn right away. So Let's just go down regular then. So it's gonna be three double crochets in a row. So one, two, three. And then we're going to just flip it up and join it. The slip stitch and then chain up three. Now the secret is is that when you go to slip stitch it make sure that you keep your tension nice and loose. If it's too tight you'll create um, a not so looking square. So you continue to go, so chaining up three. So the problem that people have is that they don't realize that they're decreasing on both sides of the, of the square when they go to do it. If you wanna create a rectangle then you just continue to uh, build up on the one side and then it will start getting uh, longer than it would be wider because you've already finished it just like you see. So here in the last one if I wanna get more narrow I'm just going to slip stitch it and be done with it. So I'm not gonna grow. You turn your work and you slip stitch again over to where you need to be. The bobbles are only done on the sides that you can see. So this is the back of the project because I can see the bobbles are on the front. So you never do anything bobbling on the back. So once you get to that chain space, chain up three and then go back in and put in your three double crochets and continue to get more smaller. So one, two, three. So the reason why this corner to corner is so addictive is that it goes so fast in the relationship that it as you get more narrow less and less stitches have to be done. And then you turn your work and then you slip stitch back. So technically I've got my three rows of regular corner to corner in. One or two, so that I'll just prove that I can. So just chain up three and then just, sorry I can popcorn if I want to. I keep saying bobbling but it's popcorn. And then you just drop it, get the second one over, grab it and then double crochet back in. and then just join it and it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna leave that for you for this week and then we'll see you back here next week. We'll start the second panel which is slightly different. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at joanne.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the second week of the Bernat Velvet Stitch Along. This is the second face, the back face of your pillow. So it's a regular corner to corner. It's again 19 boxes uh, wide by 19 high and it's just a regular corner to corner. So if you know how to do a corner to corner this is good to go. So what we're going to do, we're gonna turn to the diagram on page number two and let's take a look. If you recall last week we did corner to corner but every fourth row end up being this this popcorning that we were doing. 
This time in week number two we're eliminating the, the popcorn and just making it regular corner to corner. So this is what it will look like in diagram format. So let's eliminate that out and just essentially we're going to start off and work your way diagonally. You need a total of 19 boxes wide in order for you to have this match the front. So it's kind of a neat uh, concept. We're going to just get you started and then I'm gonna show you how to just start decreasing and then finishing off and then you'll join me next week then to finish off your pillow with me together. So let's start week number two. We're going to create a slip knot and put it onto your hook. So if you did it with me la last week, the only difference this week is that there's no popcorn stitching. So we're gonna start off the same way is that you're going to chain six but watch my secret. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. Right where I'm pinching is the first stitch and you're going to double crochet into that stitch plus two of its friends next door. So just working your way back down through the chain double crochet. So watch where this tail is. That's kind of a, a secret to this. So you're gonna turn your work and you're going to get bigger. So look at it from a diagonal point of view. So don't look at it from a flat point of view. Just turn it kind of diagonal and you're going to start the next box. So watch the secret. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. So double crochet, just move your thumb out of the way on the one you pinched and that's your first double crochet. And double crochet them back on that chain. So there's gonna be a total of three double crochets in a row when you come back across that chain. Now see, make sure that this is, is facing the right direction. So make sure that it's facing straight down towards you and then you're just gonna go to this space over here, the last space and just insert in pull through and through as a slip stitch. And now chain three, you're gonna build another box. So chain three and three double crochets into that same space. Okay, then you're going to turn your work, go for row number three. So you're gonna build it out. So you're gonna keep doing this until you get 19 boxes wide. So right now it's one and two wide high or two wide and then it's one and two high. So let's build out again. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six. Right where you're pinching is the first one. When I first started corner to corner I didn't pinch like that and I was always having to count back and it would take forever. So if you pinch it you can see it right immediately just by moving your thumb. So then flip it up and slip stitch to the spacing and then chain three and continue to build along that same space. So three double crochets in a row. Okay and we'll get that box done. Now you're gonna flip it to the next space and chain three because you're still growing out and you're going to put in three double crochets. So I'll show you one more increase round and then we'll start decreasing together. So to turn, to increase again we're going to just turn and chain your three. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six and move your thumb and start double crocheting back across that chain. The nice thing about this yarn even if you make slight mistakes the yarn is so vibrant that it's gonna hide it really well. So you're just gonna flip it up to the space and then chain three and double crochet three times. Okay then just join it to the next one and one, two, three and put in three double crochets again and you do that all the way down until you get 19 boxes wide and there will also be 19 boxes high because you're growing in a square. So one, two, three, this is the final time. So let's just say this was box number 19. So we have 19 boxes across and which will be 19 boxes also high. Let's start decreasing. So to decrease we need to get ourselves to here to start pulling it in to be together. So you can't start for where you are. So in order to start now is that you're going to slip stitch yourself across until you get to this spacing. So just slip. So one, two and three. 
and then you start. So you chain three and then just in that same space just three double crochets again and you work your way across but you don't want to work your way across like you have been because then you'll grow it out. So you need to make sure you stop before it hits the final edge. So just flipping it up and put in your three double crochets after you chain three. So the corner to corner is one of the most uh, popular stitches of crochet at this time. And you know something new will come along in the future but this is the go-to for many people on, on uh, in the crochet world. So we're gonna just join it. So technically if we wanted to grow it into a rectangle which we're not gonna do you would continue to build out on this side even though we finished off early on this side. Do you see that? But in this case we wanna maintain a square so we're gonna turn our work. So you don't wanna go any further. You just wanna stop and turn your work and just slip stitch yourself back over to that gapping space and then go right into that space and start again. So chaining up three. So you can really see that you're creating that flat edge on that side, right? Do you see that? See how you're creating this edge? Flip it up. One, two, two, three and three more double crochets into that same space and I think this is the last time for this particular one and just join it and you can see that there's a box missing. So turn and this is the final box and then chain three and fill in the final box. So you can see that we've grown out. We started to decrease and we decreased ourselves back to a point. So we've kind of gone corner to corner. So just join it and the way I like to do it to finish off completely is I turn the work and then I just slip stitch myself right to the point and that's where I'm gonna trim my yarn. So I'm just slip stitching just to get this here. And then you're done. So what I need you to do for this week is that I need you to do your boxes up to 19 wide by 19 high also decrease and therefore you'll have this particular one that matches the other one uh, for size wise and then you're gonna join me back here next week as we continue our mystery together. Welcome to week number three, the final week of the Bernat Velvet Stitch along with our friends over at Joanne. I'm Mikey from the Crochet Crowd. Today we're going to put our pillow together. So we have our front face done which was the diagonal popcorn stitch. Then we also had the back face which was just regular corner to corner and this week we're just gonna sew things together. So your pillow form is 18 inches and let's get those ready and let's begin to do the sewing. So here's the back here. This is regular corner to corner just like you see. I've got the tail on here on the right hand side of the video and if this is the left hand side it will be the other side. I then wanna take the other one that we have with the bobbles facing up, place it directly over the top and what we're going to do is that we're going to whip stitch. Now I would match the tail ends with each other therefore they kinda got the same stitch work going on and what we're going to do is then begin to sew three sides together. We're going to slip in our pillow and then we're going to sew the final, uh, the final side together. So now that we have this let's uh, begin to do the sewing practices and you're going to need a tapestry needle and your Bernat Velvet yarn to play. The first thing I would do is all these tail ends I would just take them and use your tapestry needle and just feed those on and just weave those into place so that they never fall out on you. So just taking the work, just take those and just kinda glide it through. So go once, twice and three times. And I want you to do that. You would have had to change yarn balls um, within the second video so you would have to do it with the regular corner to corner and then what you can just do is once you get it in total three times you can just safely cut that out and I want you to do that with all your tail ends now. So now that my tail ends are woven in what I want to do is that I want to take a large strand and I'm going to sew at least three sides together. If you have to use more than one strand to go all the way around that's completely up to you. So create a slip knot on the one side and leave it open and feed the other side of that same strand 
into your tapestry needle. And what I like to do is that when I go through the first time I like to put it through the slip knot and it completely locks the project in or the, the strand in position. So starting off on the one side I want you to just come through the one side here in the back and match it to the same stitch on the next one. And pull through. And when you pull through look for that the slip knot and feed it through. And what that will do is it will lock it into position for you. And then you just can just weave that in. So I'm just going to position this in a way that makes sense for me when I sew. So what I like to do is that you can leave that straggler on the interior if you would like to and just going in and match the stitches across from each other and you go right up over top. So right over it's called a whip stitch. So move to your next one. It may be harder for you to see it in camera than I can in the person. Um, this yarn has a bit of shimmer to it and it's really quite awesome but it's also very forgiving as well. If you make any mistakes you can pretty much hide it because of the fluff of the yarn and because it's so shiny too. So I'm just going to continue just to whip stitch and match my stitches going across. Don't so what I want you to do is just go three sides and then we're going to slide in our pillow form and do the final side with the pillow inside. Other, I just have one side left which the pillow is gonna slide into. I just removed the tag that was on the side of this um, just so that you have that. I don't think that's illegal. <laughs> I know it's, you can't sell a product without that tag but once it's at home it's fair game. So we're just going to slide in our pillow now and sew the remaining side shut and you'll see that it will look really quite awesome. So please uh, do that now and we'll meet you back here and we'll just conclude off today's stitch along with the Bernat Velvet with Joanne. So once you get to the very end just tie yourself a little knot and then you're just going to take in your darning needle or your tapestry needle and just weave it through. So go once and twice and three times is a charm. So if you go in and out three times it will never fall out on you and then your pillow is good to go and you're gonna be able to enjoy at the same time. And then that's it. So here is my pillow and this is the back side of the pillow. Let's turn it up and get the bobble side. The bobbles do a nice job of filling in all the spacing and this is good to go. So please enjoy your new pillow. This is compliments of Joanne.com and this is a Bernat Velvet Stitch Along and I'm your host Mike of the Crochet Craft. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.